Well, hi, and thanks for stopping by the Peloton Pistons Air Gun Channel. We've got another gorgeous day here in New England, and we've got a gorgeous rifle here on the bench. This is my uh, my new custom HW Model 50S. This is in the stainless look. It's a 177 caliber. It's got a custom Steve Corcoran stock, which is beautiful ambidextrous stock, so it works out well for a lefty like me. It's also got the swept back trigger, which is kind of nice, but uh, I'm finding it a little difficult to shoot with that trigger. I think I prefer the original. Uh, so some, one of these days, I might actually buy a new trigger group for it and just change it out. Uh, but today, we're going to put it on a bench, and we're going to see if we can't rectify a few problems that we found in a previous video. Uh, one of the problems was it was very difficult to close the action once you cock the rifle. Uh, the action just seemed to take a lot more effort to close it than typical of a, of a decent brick barrel air rifle. So I think I found a problem with that. It looks like the cocking arm is bent. So we're going to go ahead and replace that. We're going to uh, replace the tune kit that was in it. I'm not familiar with the tune kit. I can't tell you where it came from, but it, it was definitely a kit. It was sleeved. It was um, it was uh, had a couple of shims in it. It was a very short spring. It was only about eight inches long. Uh, the new kit, the new spring is about nine and a half inches long, which looks uh, to be a little more. Uh, fitting for a rifle like this. It, it just seems like uh, that 8 inch long spring was definitely causing uh, some of the low power that you might have seen in the pre previous video. We were only getting in the high 600s. I'm hoping we can get a little better than that out of this rifle. Shooting a 8.2 grain pellet, we were getting an average of around 680 I think as far as the, uh, the output of the rifle goes. Uh, that was giving us somewhere around 9 foot pounds I think or 8.5 foot pounds. This gun should produce more than that. Um, I have one of these in 22 caliber that's actually got a, a Vortec high output kit in it and that gun is producing um, about 13 and a half foot pounds I believe 13 or 13 and a half so this gun should definitely get a little more power uh, with this full power Makari kit that we're going to put in today so this ought to be fun so stick around and thanks again for stopping by the Pelican Pistons Air Gun Channel. Okay, so the first thing you'll need to do is, uh, of course, remove the stock. Once that's done, the next step is rather important. There's a small nut at the rear of the bottom of the trigger guard. Uh, remove that nut so it doesn't remove itself and get lost. It's a very small nut. It's the, uh, the rear trigger guard screw fastens into that. So keep that put aside until you're ready to reassemble the rifle. Next, we're going to drive out the two pins that hold the trigger group into the rifle. Once those pins are out, you can remove the trigger group, but be sure to hold the safety in place as you remove the trigger group, otherwise the safety can launch itself across the shop. There's a small spring that should come out along with the safety button itself. Here I found something on my bench, a, a wooden dowel of the proper size would suit the same purpose. I'm going to a, a put a little bit of pressure on the rear of the compression tube and that'll help me remove the four square lugs that are uh, inserted into the side of the compression chamber or compression tube I should say. Once the first two are out you can drive the other two out with a pin, a pin punch. And we're going to set those aside for later. Now there's a lug that's in a slot inside the rear of the compression tube and that lug has to be slid out of that slot in order to remove the pressure from the mainspring. So you're going to hold the rifle down firmly, take a small screwdriver or some other object that will fit into the uh, in between that lug and the, uh, and the housing and then just kind of cam it out of position while you put downward pressure on the rifle and that will free up the mainspring along with the plug from the rear of the barrel, I mean rear of the uh, cylinder. Alright, so that frees up your spring. Now 
we've broken the barrel and we're going to go ahead and remove the cross bolt that holds the barrel in position. We'll take the cap off first. There's a cap screw on one side of the rifle that you take off and underneath that is a very small washer that you don't want to lose. It's a little metal spring washer. A couple of taps that should drop out of the gun. And there it is. You're going to make sure you don't lose that. Put that aside. From there the pivot bolt can be unscrewed and removed from the rifle. There's a washer on that bolt as well, don't lose that. Then you can separate the barrel. When you do, that's going to free up two small friction washers. You also don't want to lose those. Those go on either side of the breech block and have to line up with that bolt hole as everything goes back together. That can be kind of a process, but we'll go over that later on. We're going to go ahead and pull the cocking rod down from the slot that it's in. And that way we can slide it out of position. And that frees up the barrel and cocking rod assembly from the receiver tube. Here I'm noticing that the, uh, the hinge bolt on the cocking arm is very tight. That's a rivet, not really a bolt, but it's also very tight. Inside here, I found that the person that customized this rifle also installed some nylon bushings that were supposed to keep the uh, cocking arm from making metal-metal contact with the receiver. However, it didn't work. It didn't stand proud enough so that the metal-to-metal -metal was still happening as you cock the rifle. Here we're tapping out the, the pin that holds the wedge assembly into the breech block. Once the pin is out, make sure you capture that lug as it removes from that hole. It's gonna come out of there with some spring force. So I just hold it down on the bench like that and then everything can be pulled out of there, the spring as well as the, uh, the latch bolt. And there's the heavy spring that helps to keep that gun closed. Now we can remove the piston assembly. Inspecting the piston seal reveals a little bit of damage that could cause some of the power loss. Here we're going to remove the cocking arm assembly from the breech block by tapping out the roll pin. If you note here, the uh, very tip of that cocking rod is in fact bent and there's also some metal to metal contact being made with the cocking arm as it's uh, slid back and forth on its uh, journey to cock the rifle. Now after cleaning the uh, recess where the locking lug goes in, I'm Go ahead and ins um, inserting a little bit of molly grease and just coating the, the walls of that hole to try to keep everything moving freely. Next I can insert the spring. 
then the locking lug itself. We're going to orient the uh, cutout in the locking lug upward towards the top of the barrel. A little pressure with the mainspring, or with the mainspring, with the bench vise. Until we get that recess lined up with the hole. Check it by looking through with a flashlight, make sure that we can see the light on both sides there. And then we know that we've got a nice clear passage to, remove, uh, to replace that pin. couple of taps to make sure it's centered within that uh, breech block. Now we're going to take some rouge and we're going to polish up the contact surfaces of the cocking shoe itself, which is a part of the new cocking rod. While you're looking at that, you may want to look a little further down the rod, you'll see a, a, like a nylon insert. That's the new and improved system and it, uh, we're hoping that that makes a difference with the galling issue that, uh, that I've had cocking this rifle. We'll flip it over, we'll do the underside, the very creases where that uh, cocking shoe will make contact with the sides of the slot. That ought to do it. Now it's time to reinstall the new cocking arm assembly. You'll notice this one's blackened instead of the nickel plated, uh, but I don't think that's going to matter because once the stock is on the gun, you're not going to be able to see it anyway. So what difference does it make what color it is? little bit of molly paste inside the, the rotating hole where, where the uh, cocking arm rotates as well as on the outside where it slides within the breech block. Finish the job with a punch, and voila, the cocking rod is reassembled onto the breech block, and this portion of the job is finished.
you know, go ahead and molly the contact surface of that nylon insert that's on the underside of the caulking rod. This is where it makes, con makes contact with the receiver tube as the gun is cocked. Now we're going to prep the piston for the installation of three buttons that we're going to go ahead and install on the piston to try to reduce some of the friction, which may help increase the power of the gun but it also decreases the chance that the, uh, the piston will make contact with the walls of the cylinder, causing metal to metal wear. Here I'm just degreasing the surface after sanding it lightly. You want to rough it up to give the epoxy, not the epoxy, but the adhesive something to stick to. Here we've got the three buttons with the bottom side up. The bottom is the darker side of the button. And we're gonna go ahead and degrease these with 91% um, isopropyl alcohol. Just use a Q-tip and I'm just gonna swipe them a few times to try to remove any oils or greases that might be impregnated into the surface. Now when I install the button, I'm going to make sure that I don't install one in line with the cocking slot on the piston itself. Um, that would interfere with the operation of the gun and it would also uh, negate any advantage that the button would have because it wouldn't be making contact with the wall of the cylinder. Um, so we're going to make a, a pattern that avoids that area with a three-point contact. So we'll show you one of the buttons and how it's installed and you just repeat the process with the other two. Here I'm taking a little bit of ordinary super glue. Buy a good brand of fresh super glue. Don't buy a, a house, you know, a house brand that you've never heard of before. Try to get something that has a reputable reputation so that you know you've got a good product because this needs to last and last and last. And here I'm just affect, affixing it to the very top edge of that not top edge but the, the very rear edge of the piston and you can see that I'm avoiding that slot by quite a bit once in place you just rotate the piston and the vise and install the next one and so on and so forth until you have three nicely fitted buttons evenly spaced around the piston While that glue is drying, we're going to go ahead and swab out inside the bore, make sure everything's good and clean. Follow that with some dry patches and dry everything out real well. All right, now we're going to try fit the uh, the piston. Make sure those buttons have a low enough profile to make it uh, to be able to clear through the uh, receiver tube. As you can see here, that's not the case. They need to be taken down some. So that's the next step in the process. We're going to sand those buttons down and keep trying the fit of the receiver tube until we get it just right.
We'll give it a shot. Still a little too tight. Back to work on those buttons. There we go. That's more like it. That's a good snug fit, but not so tight that it's going to hinder the motion of the piston through the cylinder. Perfect. Okay, so that's it for today. We're, we're going to stop here and, and say that we did some really good progress. We've got quite a bit accomplished, and next week when we uh, release the next video, uh, I always release the videos on Saturday at 7 p.m. That's Eastern Standard Time in the United States. Um, and, uh, so keep an eye out for that next video. It ought to be a good one. We're going to put it back together again, and we're going to take it back out here, and we're going to run it over the chronograph and compare that to uh, what we got before we opened her up. So, uh, yeah, absolutely, to tune in. It's going to be a great video. I want to thank you folks very much, and, and I want to apologize. Usually I'll ring the bell at this point, but I don't have a gun. It's a part. It's on the bench. <laughs> so I can't ring the bell for you this week, but I promise if I remember, next week I'll ring it twice for you to celebrate this week and, and next week. So tune in. I uh, hope to see you there. Thanks so much, folks, for stopping by the Pellets and Pistons Airgun channel. If you haven't subscribed, please do that. You know, hit the bell to be reminded of future videos, and by all means, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this one. Thanks again, folks, and have a great day. To be reminded of the future videos, and thanks again for tuning in to the Pellets and Pistons. <laughs> <laughs>